Hey everybody, so we have our first question on our Facebook page, and Eric, maybe you didn't know, or maybe you did, <clears throat> that you actually asked me about one of my most favorite subjects in historical geology. So, your question is actually pretty complex, uh, we've got quite a few things going on in there, so hopefully I'm going to get to hit all of these. So let's go ahead and see if we can start answering this. So, in order to first figure out <clears throat> where the ocean crust and continental crust comes from, we actually have to first go back to Earth's initial crust. So when Earth initially formed, it was a homogeneous molten mass. The word homogeneous means the same throughout. So we didn't have any layers on Earth's surface. You can use this big fancy word here, differentiated. So the word differentiated means where do those layers come from? So <clears throat> I'm not quite sure here if you mean whether the crustal layers or the layers overall, but I'm going to hit all of it anyway. So, as Earth started cooling, now again, we're, we're going back about 4.6 billion years ago, we know the Earth is spinning and it's cooling. The layers on the inside of the Earth got there in one of two ways. One way is more plausible than the other, but we have to go with two, two possible ways. The first way is this differentiation that Eric is asking about. Differentiation means the layers. So as the earth is spinning, all of the heavy material, we use green for heavy, all of the heavy material is going to go to the center and all the light material is going to come towards the outside. So this is what, hence why we know today that the, the core, part of why we know the core is made of much heavier material than the crustal material. The second way that the Earth could have gotten its layers is the Earth kind of forming like a zoned crystal. Crystals form from the inside out, so as a crystal forms, you'll get, you know, one molecule together, then it'll keep growing, right, until it gets bigger. So that is possible that that is how the Earth got its layers on the inside. Most likely not probable, but it is a possibility. Okay, let's get back to this, because this is the fun stuff, in my opinion here. All right. Let me get rid of that. Okay. So, as Earth originally started to cool, okay, so here we've got our Earth slice. The crust, as it cooled, was initially very, very thin. Today, the crust is much thicker, but it was very, very thin at first. And it was composed of something totally different than it is today. The Earth's initial crust was called comadiite. And this is what we call ultramafic. The word mafic means we have a lot of iron and magnesium in there. So if it's ultramafic, it's got even more iron and magnesium in there. Now what's interesting is Earth's initial crust was made up of this commandite stuff. And I'm going to use the color green because it actually has a green coloring to it. It's really cool, really pretty. Um, and Comadiite only forms in areas that are about 1,100 degrees or hotter, right? So somewhere around there. So this tells us that Earth's surface was super hot, right, at first, right, as the Earth first started to form this crust. Now, we know below today, below the solid crust, in the asthenosphere, we have this thing called convection that's going. Convection works just like a lava lamp. So inside the earth, we've got the core. We'll put the core down here. And we know the core is really hot, right? That's, a, that's another topic if we want to talk about that. But we know the core is hot. And it's heating up this partially molten material sitting on top of it. And just like a lava lamp, this partially molten material is going to move upwards. And it's going to sit up there and cool. And as it cools, it's going to become more dense and heavy and move down. We call that convection. Now, because this comadiate crust was really thin, convection was pushing this stuff around all over the place. So imagine you've got these really thin, tiny layers of very heavy crust, and it's moving really quick. So at the beginning, these plates were moving really, really fast. So what are the odds that two plates would hit and collide with each other? Well, pretty high. Right? because we've got these little plates that are moving all over the place. And comadiite crusts are going to act very similar to what ocean crusts do today because they're heavy. So when these crusts collide with each other, let me get rid of, let's see if I can get rid of, oh, we're just going to clear all this and start over. When these comadiite crusts collide with each other, so we're going to do two, two crusts, 
One is going to subduct, just like we see the ocean floor today. So one begins to subduct underneath the other. Now, remember, this chamadiite crust is made up of iron and magnesium. Now, even though it's got a lot of iron and magnesium in it, there is still going to be some silica and oxygen. Right? It goes without saying. Usually wherever you find iron, you're going to find oxygen. But even though this is ultramafic, there's still always, this stuff gets into everything. Remember, two, two of the most common elements in the Earth's crust. So, as this plate subducts, remember, this is not a friendly interaction here, the subduction. We're generating a lot of friction, right? And friction is going to release the earthquakes, all that crazy stuff. But it's also going to partially melt the top portion of this downgoing plate. As it melts, of course, that melt doesn't want to stay there, and it's going to come up and out, up and out of a volcano. Now, what is this material made of? Here is the key here, Eric. What is this material made of? Well... You might not know a lot about magnesium, but I bet you know something about iron. Iron has a really high melting point, right? I can't just take a hunk of iron, put it in my oven at home, and hope it melts, right? We need a really high melting point. So this tells me that as this plate is going from room temperature, or air temperature, ocean temperature, right, and going underneath, it's not going to get hot enough at first to release a lot of that iron. Let's think about silica and oxygen. I hope you know something about oxygen because you're currently breathing it, right? Oxygen at room temperature, O2 at room temperature is a gas. So that definitely goes to show you just oxygen in and of itself has a pretty low melting point, especially compared to iron, right, when it's put into rocks. So if we're going to melt, heat this rock up from earth temperature to hotter, right, which two elements are going to melt out first, the mafic or the felsic? Give you a second to think there. Hopefully you said the felsic. Yeah, so the felsic material is going to come out first. So what happens is these initial volcanoes that are going to right, be erupting are going to be providing, are going to be putting down a lot of felsic material, right? So over time we're going to start to see this switch going from this ultramafic base to having this much more felsic material on top of it. And of course, as this gets thicker, you're only going to get igneous intrusions, right? You can get those big plutons that are going to be made up of that same felsic material. So you're going to get lots of granite, which we know today is most commonly what the, the continents are composed of. So what's really important here is that we go from this chamadiite crust to continental crust, I'll talk about ocean crust in a second, with the help of plate tectonics. Without plate tectonics, we are not, I can spell, I'm writing too fast, I'm excited. Um, without plate tectonics, we're not going to get this switch, right? So subduction in plate tectonics is bringing us our first, right, true continental crust. Now, let's look at the ocean. So, if we've got two plates over here colliding, that means back here, I've got two plates that are moving apart from each other, right? We know that the Earth is a grand recycler. So wherever I've got subduction and I'm destroying crust, I'm making crust somewhere else, right? Because the Earth volume stays about the same. Granted, we know that we've got meteorites that come and add a little bit of mass, but that's really small, right? So we know in general the, the volume of the Earth stays the same. So, in areas where we have spreading, remember, below our crust, we've got that asthenosphere. We've got this partially molten material. So, as this crack opens up, we're going to get this partially molten material that's going to come out. And for those of you geology people, right, that may have had one and one before, this is where we create that ophiolite sequence. Now, this material that's coming out down here, remember, the further deeper, the deeper we go inside the earth, the hotter it gets and the more dense the materials are going to be. So this material in the asthenosphere is going to already be rich. It's going to have a lot of iron and magnesium in there. And of course, we can't leave out our friends, silica and oxygen. So as this material comes up, it's naturally going to be much more mafic, um, especially because it's not sitting around. This material, as it's sitting here, melting, coming up out of this subduction zone, it's sitting and cooling. The cooler it gets, the more felsic it's going to be. As it comes out and it's warm, it's not really getting a chance to cool, it's going to be much more mafic. 
So the moral of this story is our first ocean and continental crust were made from the destruction of that Kamadiite crust. And the destruction of that Kamadiite crust tells us that plate tectonics was started. Now you might say, okay, well, when did that happen, right? How long ago? Well, that happened about, well, we, we actually have a little bit of new information. Um, traditionally, we're going to say about two and a half billion years ago, um, when we go from the time period called the Archean to the Proterozoic. The dividing line between these two time periods is when we see modern styles of plate tectonics. So by the time we are in the Proterozoic, we fully see ocean and continental crust, no problem. Um, however, there's some new information out, pushing, potentially pushing back um, the initial timing of continental and oceanic crust to maybe three billion years. So it might have happened somewhere right in here, right before the Proterozoic, um, but regardless, it happened between three to two and a half billion years ago, which is pretty amazing. So thank you for asking one of my most favorite topic questions, Eric, and I certainly hope that answered it.